you could put anyone, dead or alive, on the New Year's honours list, who would it be? At the end of a year that saw a host of household names pass away, new research has revealed that two-thirds of us think we should award posthumous honours. Well, on the line with me now is awards expert Mark Llewellyn Slade. Good morning to you, Mark. Morning, Nikki. So, how would posthumous honours work? Do, are they already in place? No, they're not in place at the moment, Nikki. And it's often only when we reflect on someone's life and achievements after they've passed away that we realise that they didn't receive the recognition they deserved when they were alive. As things currently stand, there's no process for nominating someone posthumously, which I think is a real shame. And, and I don't um, seem to be the only one who thinks that way. As you mentioned just now, uh, we conducted some uh, research earlier this month and found that two-thirds of the population would like to see honours being offered posthumously. Also, what I found particularly interesting was that that figure rose to three-quarters amongst younger people aged 16 to 24. So there's um, you know, a real feeling out there that uh, people should be recognised after they pass away. But when you say recognised, when you're alive and you have an honour, what does it actually do for you? Oh gosh, well it will raise your profile, enhance your reputation and of course it will instil that vital ingredient um, in all walks of life which is trust. People tend to trust and look up to and respect people who have an honour. Do they? Like Sir Philip Green, for example. Uh, yeah, you get your, you know, <laughs> I had to do it. You gave it to me. No, absolutely. And I can understand you picking on you know, high-profile people who perhaps don't deserve an honour and haven't acted as you know, role models to, to other people. But let's not forget that nearly 2,500 honours are given out every year. And most of those people... Um, uh, over 80% in fact are what I describe as being extraordinary ordinary people so they're not celebrities, pop stars, billionaire businessmen and that kind of thing they're people who are working tirelessly within the community and, and for charity uh, week in week out and they're getting that recognition they deserve So who actually makes the decisions? Oh it's the cabinet office essentially so there's a department called the Honours Secretariat at the Cabinet Office um, and within the Cabinet Office there, there, uh, and, and that department there, there are nine subcommittees. So for example there's, there's a medical subcommittee that will look at people being put forward for medical related honours, there's a, an education committee, a sports committee and sitting on those committees are experts in their field and they will review the various nominations that have come in and make recommendations to the Prime Minister as to who should get an honour and at what level. The Prime Minister will then um, have a look at that and, and essentially rubber stamp it or, or, or not and then he'll pass that list to Buckingham Palace who again will take a look at it and give the green light. And do Buckingham Palace ever put their own two pennies worth in? Well, I'm sure they do, uh, and, and not necessarily on the record as such. Right. So we would never know if, uh, you know, Her Majesty or her office put a line through a particular name. Um, but they have a say in it. Uh, but essentially it's the Cabinet Office and the Prime Minister that drive these um, awards. And then once, once the list has been agreed, a letter is usually sent out to the potential recipient about six weeks before the list is announced and it says something along the lines of if the Queen was to give you an honour mm. would you accept it right and then you have to reply saying she would and the reason for that is that it avoids people being publicly awarded an honour um, and then turning it down which has happened in the distant past and so, Mark, w w which sort of famous faces do you think we'll see on the honours list this year? I mean, apart from Victoria Beckham, who allegedly is on the list and has spoken about it. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I think our, our Olympic heroes are going to figure prominently. So Andy Murray, I think he's going to get an upgrade from his OBE, so perhaps a CBE or quite possibly a knighthood. I mean, he's a true leader in his field. He ended the year as... Uh, you know, the undisputed world number one. 
uh, and as uh, BBC Sports Personality of the Year, of course, and, and was a, an Olympic gold medalist. I wouldn't be surprised if uh, the boxer Nicola Adams um, is on there again, a, a, an Olympic hero. Um, it'd be nice if Nigel Farage got something, wouldn't it? Why, um, why would that be? Well, he did um, an amazing job, whatever your view is on No, 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 I'm, j I'm not um, p p putting a political stance on it. I just wonder what you think he's done. Well, I think he's been an amazing campaigner over the Brexit issue. He really has led the charge um, for the lead, Leave campaign. And, and rightly or wrongly, whatever people feel about it, he has done a tremendous job uh, fighting for what he believes in. So I, I think he could be considered as a leader in his field in the world of politics. I think it would be contentious. I think a lot of people would shout about it. But I suppose that's what happens every time one of these lists is published. So my final question needs to be, you know, who would people rather see on the list? Uh, or would they rather honours be abolished, do you think? I mean, I know in terms of the dead people, um, the suggestions have been Alan Rickman, Muhammad Ali. I mean, who knows now we are emotional about George Michael. Maybe his name will be put forward. But who do you think people really want on those lists? Well, I think they want to see a mix of people on there, whether they be celebrities or, or so-called ordinary people who are doing great work. But I think what they really want are those that excel in their chosen field. Now, that might be a famous actor or pop star. Um, it, it may be a, an Olympian. Um, but equally, it may be, you know, somebody working tirelessly around the corner for a local charity. So I, I don't think people mind what type of people are on there as long as they think, ah, I can understand why that person is being recognised. Rather, rather than just being recognised as being famous and being famous being a rite of passage to an honour. Mark, one final very quick question. Is there any chance that the word empire might be removed from these honours as we don't really have an empire anymore? Well, people talk about this, but, you know, it's part of our history. And, and why should we write off and forget our history at the end of the day? We may or may not have an empire, but we did once and the honours have been going since 1890. So, hey, let's not waste too much time worrying about that. Mark Llewellyn Slade, thank you so much for talking to us this morning.